you'd been doing music for years and years, and then mm -hmm. all of, and probably I think as an artist, you wait for the time, you know, when you when you really blow up and then when it happens what happens to you then you know a lot happens you get a lot of attention quickly you know what i mean and for us um you know we 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 had been doing music i've been with the group since i was like 13 or 14 years old so you know when i remember the success of fuji la having at first we didn't know how to take it you know mm -hmm. we we weren't used to that we'd already been around the world performing with a with our first album and it had like a moderate you know what i mean a moderate response so you know, we were, we were cool. You know, mm -hmm. we would be able to go out in shows and walk amongst the crowd and people would be like, hey, what's up? But then I remember doing one show and having girls running and screaming and I was going, you know, who else is here? Who's here? Until I realized that they were screaming for us, you know, and it, um, you know, it, it was it was a blessing. You know, mm -hmm. the entire time was like was like a complete blessing that there were people not only in New York, Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, New Jersey, who appreciated our music, but people out here in Amsterdam, you know, people in New Zealand and Australia and Africa were buying records from the Fugees. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like a, you know, it, you don't even, you. Can, I, it's really hard to express in words what an impact it makes, you know what I mean, when you come from East Orange, South Orange, New Jersey, and, and now you're in Amsterdam, you're in Holland, mm -hmm. and there are people who feel you just as deeply as people, you know, yeah. on your street, on yeah. your block. So, you know, it's like, you know, I, it, was, it was a big, 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 big thing. But how did you manage to um, um, get used to the feeling then? Feeling of um, being a mega, mega superstar. You know what? I never really adapted being a mega, mega superstar. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just Lauryn Hill, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we got a lot of attention, but I, it was very important to me that I continued to be just Lauryn Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and I think pretty much I had a, you know, I, I really appreciate my fans, you know, because I think they always had a level of respect for me. You know what I mean? I could still go to the store and buy some eggs, you know, mm -hmm. and not have to put on makeup, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could just be cool and be straight. And people still just, you know, were able to understand and, yeah. and, and, and give me that space and that time. Um, but it's hard, you know, it's hard balancing and juggling. It's hard, you know, being, um, you know, uh, the regular person that you are one day and the next day being under public scrutiny, you mm -hmm. know, having to live your life, you know, um, you know, in front of a camera, you know, it's not, it's not an easy thing, but, um, I have a love for the music and I think that I focus and I concentrate on making music first for the public, for the fans, mm -hmm. for the audience out there. You know what I mean? It's more, it's more for them than it is for me being a superstar. I'm, I'm, I'm more moved by, by the musicianship, you know what I mean, and the artistry of, of hip hop and, and R&B and what I do, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not really my billboard status, it's, it's how I can create and how I can develop as an artist. This is the Music Factory.